Oh, we gotta talk about Kathy Wood and what the heck is she doing? We're gonna talk about exactly that. I do wanna announce a new challenge I have coming out starting next week, Monday. That's right after Thanksgiving, folks. Guess what? $5 million trading challenge. And that and every single trade that I conduct with daily trading will be screenshotted and shared with everyone in the Stocks and Psychology of Money group. So if you want to be part of the $5 million trading challenge, check out the Stocks and Psychology of Money group. You got that Black Friday coupon code 60% off. We're going to do a trading challenge between now and probably the next six months, which is roughly when I think it's time to start trading real estate. But we'll see. We might let that keep going. Maybe we'll even do both at the same time. Anyway, check that out via the link down below. Make sure you take advantage of this 60% coupon. But now, what is Kathy up to? Because Kathy has scooped up 1.3 million shares of Coinbase. <sighs> Coinbase, 1.3 million shares worth about $56 million. She started buying this right around the time when the FTX collapse began. And uh, conveniently, after, I mean, that's right around here, these 8, 9% drops. Look at that, 8.92% drop, 11.32, uh, 39% drop here. Then we got the decently positive CPI report here on the 10th. Coinbase ended up rocketing up about 10%. It ended up closing that day at $51. Kathy's buy, 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 buy on, on Coinbase. Now it's down another 20%. The thing's sitting at 40 bucks right now. $40.81 is what it's currently trading for. For some reason, Kathy Wood keeps buying this. She's now up to 19% uh, or up 19% that is on her allocation for Coinbase on her ARK K fund. She owns about 4.7% of all Coinbase outstanding. It's now the 13th largest position in ARK K. And I hate to say it, I don't know about this. I don't know about this, okay? The, 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 what I see in this report just isn't that juicy. Now, we're going to look at that. But I want to say, Coinbase, in fairness, did just put out a statement that they have custody of some of the GBTC assets. That has led to a lot of enthusiasm for Coinbase, though obviously not enough because the darn thing's down like literally 10% today. But let's look at the last quarter's earnings report and let's just look at some of the highlights we got here because I'm really trying to look at what Kathy Wood is trying to do. I can't help but think she's committed to blockchain and this is just all right even though it's going down more the merrier let's just keep buying it and that's fine when it's something where you're like the fundamentals are good you know something else is causing this right but when you look at the fundamentals for Coinbase, I, I don't know. I wouldn't call them good. Here's why. All right. Hello, shareholders. Q3 was a mixed quarter for Coinbase. Transaction revenue was significantly impacted by stronger macroeconomic and crypto market headwinds, as well as trading volumes moving offshore. None of that is good. When the macro economy does worse, people have less money to deposit into Coinbase and they trade less. So not only do they trade with less, and then whatever they had, the value of that goes down when, when these currencies go down, but then they trade less to begin with because people don't like trading crypto when the crypto markets are collapsing. But it also leads to softening secondary levels of revenue. Now, fortunately, in this last report, Coinbase actually had some growth in subscription and services revenue, but that was always built into the bag. Because remember when this company IPO'd, the idea, and I said it in my video over a year ago, we knew that transaction revenue would go down because of competition in the space. But what we expected was that services like lending and, and staking, whatever, all of the other services would eventually pick up. So we expected a, an inverted, uh, you know, sort of uh, earnings growth uh, peak here, where basically you have an earnings decline and then hopefully an explosion where you basically go from level one revenue to level two revenue. Problem is, the entire crypto market started collapsing. So when the entire crypto market started collapsing, you ended up having L1 go down. But unfortunately, L1 ended up going down a lot more than expected. And the gain in L2 has been like that. 
So, you know, it just hasn't been the prettiest picture. And therefore, when you zoom out on Coinbase, you see, oh yeah, here's a company that was once a $368 stock, bouncing around over here at the 225 to 230 level for quite a while, and is now trading for $40. So then of course they talk about transitioning or people and retail customers behavior transitioning from trading crypto to just hodling crypto. And maybe people are uncertain about the regulatory framework because as prices are going down, we're also seeing monthly volume decline over 50% in nine months, which is terrible by the way, because that's how they make their fees, right? But it's not just that, look at this. If you just type in Coinbase transfer into Google search trends, you're just now starting to see the potential pickup that could worsen. It's still very early. It's nowhere near the levels that we saw during the crypto boom over here, 2020, 21. If you just sort of zoom into 2022, you can see we're at lower levels of people wanting to transfer than the pain we saw in the summer, which is good. But you are seeing a pickup because people realize not your keys, not your crypto, they're wanting to get off exchanges. Now Coinbase does give you your own wallets, but people might not recognize that and might think I need to get off exchange and so there could actually be a flood of people wanting to leave a service like Coinbase if they're concerned after the whole FTX fiasco. But beside those potential headwinds that could come for Q4, because certainly crypto prices aren't doing too well, after all, not only are, uh, are we seeing uh, Bitcoin prices stumbling, but Ethereum prices are faltering under, well, probably the FTX hacker dumping. Ethereum sitting at just under $1,100 at the time of this recording and BTC folks sitting at 15,789. Yikes, yikes, painful. Anyway, so we've got clear pain in the market. So we're not really that enthusiastic about Q4 for Coinbase. And you can't really blame me for saying that because not only is Genesis about to file for bankruptcy if they can't raise enough capital to bail out their lending division, but look at what Coinbase said in their earnings call. Their forecast ending October is based on the following, quote, this is assuming our market cap doesn't go down and deteriorate meaningfully below October and we don't see any changes in consumer behavior. All of this was before FTX blew up. But let's try to understand some of the numbers. So monthly transacting users down to eight and a half million is actually not too bad. You know, in Q3 of last year, we were sitting at 7.3. So when you look year over year, you're at growth but we're certainly down from Q4, you know, that November boom that we had, we're way down from Q4. But the other thing to consider is, oh man, look at that revenue. That revenue year over year is down more than half, $578 million of revenue, leading to a loss in Q2 of a billion dollars and a loss of about 545 million in Q3. So losing money hand over fist, user trajectories are going down. Not only are user trajectories going down, but Coinbase is telling you that people are transacting less. Now you have people fearful about lending services because of the FTX disaster. Gemini earn freezing withdrawals on uh, earn products. That's likely going to lead to even fewer L2 revenues, right? Secondary services of revenue. But let's go over here and let's look at some of these things. Look at this. They also tell us that Coinbase One and Coinbase Cloud are the two sectors that are actually propping up growth. They saw revenue move up to $31 million, 29% growth. Sounds really good, right? But wait a minute, $31 million out of $576 million of net revenue? Wait a second here. 31 divided by 576. That means those L2 services only represent 5.3% of all of their revenue. That means still L1 represents like 95% of all the revenue. And they're telling you from January to September, that's down 50%. 
and they're losing money hand over fist. But don't worry, L2, these secondary services of revenue, these will get a lot better, right? Because after all, what does Coinbase One let you do? Oh, Coinbase One lets you trade with zero fees. Wait a minute, but people are trading less and zero fees actually just self cannibalizes the revenues that you're trying to make. So you're cannibalizing your trader's revenue, which is already plummeting in exchange for something that only makes up 5% of your company's revenue. Oh God. So don't mind the fact that Coinbase One or Coinbase Cloud, which the cloud version is sort of their API blockchain builder for other people to be able to use or companies to be able to use. Don't mind the fact that both of those could suffer substantially after all this FTX disaster and drama. Don't worry folks. Coinbase is very excited to announce that just over 1% of their revenue is now coming from learning rewards. So that way when you watch videos and refer people to Coinbase, Coinbase gets a little bit of money. <sighs> okay, all right, okay, fine, fine. Let's just keep looking here. The good news, there is good news. The company does have money. They have corporate cash. I like that. I like corporate cash sitting around $2.5 million, a billion dollars, sorry, and 2.8 over here in money market. Okay, great. That's nice. But how much of this, my friends, are they actually burning? Well, when we go to the cash flow statement and we jump over here and look at net cash used by operating activities in the last nine months, they've burned nearly $5 billion. But wait a minute, wait a minute. How much cash did they have? Oh, right. They had roughly $5 billion in cash, which is roughly the equivalent of how much they literally burned wasting money over the last five months. But it's okay. It gets better. Their, their revenues, okay? Their revenues for the three months ended September 2022 compared to 21 fell by 53% while at the same time, their technology costs went up by 56%. So understand that for a moment, okay? Revenue down 53%. Expenses for running Coinbase.com up 56%. It's not good. It's not good, okay? It's like, it's just, it's not good. Uh, what do we have here? GNA, GNA, 339 divided by 242, 40% increase in their staff. And then they cut their marketing budget by like 25% on top of that. Yet for some reason, they're still bloating the corporate office. And the bigger question is, Kathy, why are you buying this? I don't know. I want to know. I, I, I think... They're, you know, if, if the FTX stuff could bottom out, if all the crypto shoes could drop, fine. Kathy did also buy GBTC. Now, GBTC doesn't want to verify where all of their reserves are. Just a little sus, just a little, you know. We, I'm not going to go and say it's all sus. It's just a little sus. It's definitely sus though. But, uh, you know, if you believe Bitcoin is going to last uh, for the long term, it's a juicy discount at GBTC. I made a video on that this morning. But straight up buying Coinbase right now, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm going to miss out on this trade. But if you want to be part of my $5 million trading challenge, stocks and psychs, folk, you'll get every single buy sell alert on that $5 million trading portfolio. And that's not going to be a long term investing portion. That's just going to be trading. So that way, my long term investments are going to sit put. If I don't trade on those, don't worry. If I do trade on those, you'll get alerts on those too. But for stocks and psych, we are now adding a whole new $5 million trading portfolio. We're gonna do a lot of fun uh, selling of options, buying of options. Uh, we're, we're really gonna play the news cycle, so it's gonna be fun. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.